Hello, and welcome to the Hamumu Halloween Home Horror Hoedown. I am your host, Mike Hommel. And I'm your other host, Soli Hommel. And we're going to take you through 31 scary movies through the month of October, like we do every year. But for the first time this year, we're going to do it entirely in audio format. We like to mix it up every year. One thing you need to be aware of is that we will be employing a truly ghoulish number of spoilers throughout all of these reviews. So if you haven't seen the movie we're reviewing, maybe don't listen to our podcast until you do. We highly recommend you check them out and watch along with us. It's going to be fun for everybody. I mean, how could it not be? So if you're ready and you've watched the movie, please step inside our lair and let's begin. The Eyes of My Mother is a 2016 movie, rated R. We watched it on Netflix, but it was not a Netflix original or anything, right? No. It has a very short running time, only 76 minutes. It was like barely over an hour. And let's see, IMDb gives it a 6.1. Uh, Metacritic gives it a 63. And Rotten Tomato, get, it gets a 76 from the critics, but only a 56 from the audience which does not surprise me at all, considering the kind of movie it is. Yeah, I think that's all pretty much in a reasonable range, though, I think. Yeah, I, fe I feel like that pretty much, you know, the, the 75 and the 56 average out to roughly what the <laughs> yeah. others were giving it. So some interesting things about this movie, aside from its short running time, also it is a black and white film. It is. Yes. Indeed. I, I also see that you gave it the tags slow and bleak, which I think are both very appropriate. Yeah, I usually I feel like there's a bunch of those throughout the month, but this is actually the first time I've used them this month. So, yeah. you know, that's a very common horror thing where the movie is just grabbing at you and dragging you through the mud for the whole runtime. You know, it's yeah. basically a lot of horror movies are about grief and depression and sadness in Instead of actual scares and danger. Like the Babadook. Like the Babadook. Year. Which uh -huh. is indeed slow and bleak. It was. And and I remember in our discussion we were saying it was basically just a movie length symbol for depression. Yeah. I liked it. So tell me why you picked The Eyes of My Mother for our film today. The Eyes of My Mother has been on my radar for at least a year, maybe longer. I kept meaning to do it because it, it seemed intriguing. The fact that it's black and white is interesting. And it, I, I mean, judging by those numbers, the reviews don't seem that great. But I definitely there were, like, I, I would often check lists of, you know, what are the best horror movies on Netflix? And this would come up. So I would check it out and almost watch it, and I never did. So I don't know if I have a, an official reason other than the fact that I had reasons in the Interesting. past. Interesting. It is surprising that we haven't seen many others like this so far this year. We've sort of been drifting more towards the ludicrous or even the gory compared to, yeah. you know, that artsy type of film. This definitely feels like a... a you know, film festival, art yeah, student sure. kind of thing. Yeah, this is, um, I have a big question regarding that issue, but this is very, I mean, it looks like a movie from the 50s that's very, like a Hitchcock-y kind of movie, except it's not. <laughs> not anything like Hitchcock, but yeah, it does have that feel. I mean, is that just because it's black and white, though? Well, it's not just black and white. It also, I'm not even sure when it takes place. I feel like it's maybe the 80s, but it's, it's modern, but because she lives on this isolated farm, basically it's the past. It, it does sort of feel like um, like Great Depression era. Yeah, it's it but I feels don't think it was way back. But it's not because oh yeah, um, they go to the bar and, or you know she goes yeah. to the bar that one time and when picks up the girl. But what is the first line and first shot of this movie? Oh right, I forgot. So the first shot, we are in a, a large vehicle. You can tell it's like a large truck or a semi or something, mm -hmm. um, kind of old, busted up. And it's traveling down the road. So the shot is like looking straight ahead out of the windshield of this vehicle. And you see, um, you know, kind of the road stretched out in, ahead. And then there is a, a person standing in the road. The truck stops, the person collapses. Like that's all the beginning. And there's um, a song playing on the radio in the truck, I think. Oh, yeah, there is. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because I wondered if that was supposed to be the first line. Yeah. 
And I di I'm glad I didn't pick that because I, I think that was just environment. It was it didn't have anything to do. I mean, I'm sure it was symbolic of something. Yeah. I don't know what, but the the actual first line is uh, Francesca's mother saying, Saint Francis spent many years living alone in the woods. Which definitely was symbolic of her being alone in the woods. Yeah, she spent the whole movie kind of just living out in the middle of nowhere, basically not interacting with other human beings, and it made her a little bit weird. It did. So one of the themes that runs throughout the movie is that everyone she loves leaves. Yeah. Every time she tries to develop a connection with somebody or she starts to develop a connection, they leave. For one reason or another. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like they had pretty good reasons. I think Many of the times they had pretty good reasons. I mean, I, I think that the first one, when her mother leaves, when her mother's murdered, you know, that was that was the piece that, like, broke her in terms of not being able to accept loved ones going away. But nothing that happened to her in this movie really justifies, I don't know if that's the right word, but really justifies any of her behavior. Like, I feel like she was already broken before that happened. Yeah, I think the fact that she was really into surgery lessons from her mom decapitating a cow and cutting its eyes out you could tell something was not quite right from the beginning yeah twist though those cow's eyes horrifying scene they cut the eye open and take the lens out yeah. i had no idea i mean i'm assuming this is accurate that lenses are like these they're like they're like lenses they're pieces of glass i mean they're not glass but whatever something they're hard very hard and like you know convex on both sides and they're like they're a, like a glass lens exactly i thought i always thought they were like contact lenses kind of like it was just the surface of your eye that was the lens very weird that's interesting we'll have to like look into that because i i i feel like i had the same thought that you did like that it was yeah. something thin I but i don't know why i was, feel that i didn't think there was anything hard in your eyes interesting anatomy lesson for us well or or total or not. fake <laughs> yeah yeah that was that was a tricky bit to start out with right there like immediately they're like human eyes are just like cow's eyes so here cut this one open I'm like, oh yeah. hi that's actually the only line i wrote down so i'll call it my favorite line was her mom standing over the decapitated cow's head in the kitchen it's sitting on the table and she's like this is how they kill it Yep, that'll do it. You take the head off, and it's pretty much done. It's dead. Yeah, and her mom seemed to have passed along a lot of medical knowledge in those yeah. short, you know, 10, 12 years. Because Francisca managed to keep a couple of people alive longer than they probably should have stayed alive. Yeah, that was, that was a large part of the upset. Especially the second of those people, Antonio's mom. She stabs her... And, like, basically, she appears to be dead. She's crawling across the floor, barely alive. And then we find out she survived, and she's just fine for the next however many years. I mean, I feel like that depends on what your definition <laughs> no. of fine is. She was not fine at all. Um, she was yeah, very unhappy. But she did stay alive. And here's the thing. The same thing happened with Charlie, the guy who killed yeah. Francisca's, Francisca's mom. She takes their eyes out. She does do that. Spoilers. Probably should have said that first. Uh, it's said at the intro of the yeah. show. She takes their eyes out. So, okay, at the very least, Charlie is out in that barn for six years. At the very least. At least. I know, chained to the floor. Chained to the Can't floor. Can't go anywhere. In a barn. Ugh. Like, I don't... Mute and blind. Yes. And even after the... All that time has passed. His face is still, like, his eyes are still all gooey and runny yeah. and, like, nasty. And all I could think at that point was, there's no way <laughs> that this guy didn't get some kind of infection that killed him. There's no way. Yeah, it's probably not super realistic that he would look like that by the end. No. There were so many practical things, and I don't know what that says about me, but I'm like... How's he going to the bathroom? Know, why is this why that. is this area so clean still after 10 years of him being chained to the same spot? Like Yeah. Well, I was worried about, I mean, 
worried is the wrong word, but about the integrity of those chains. I mean, you give yourself a few <laughs> years of being chained to wooden boards, you're going to get loose. I mean, right. they can't hold up forever. Right. Especially since it was very clear that neither one of them had given up hope of escape. Because soon, it, immediately upon being given the opportunity, they both took off. Yeah. Which <laughs> felt reasonable to me. Like, you don't okay. Um, unfortunately, they were in a strange place and their eyes had been taken out, so they didn't get far. No. So one of one of the lines that I wrote down, I, I cannot claim that I have a favorite line from this movie because this movie was so disturbing. Like, And also there weren't a lot of lines. It would weren't. go for days in total silence before somebody said something. Yeah. So there weren't a lot of lines, but one of the lines that I wrote down was in the first section, Franny's dad has come home and discovered that her mom's been murdered by this I don't know. Was he a drifter? Was he a door-to-door salesman? Uh, Something like that. Yeah. Um, anyway, this guy, Charlie. And he, instead of turning him in or even killing him, which I felt <laughs> was a dramatic but also sort of appropriate response, <sighs> he takes him out to the barn and chains him up. Like, Franny got her idea. This is what we do. Came by it naturally. So Fra- he tells Franny that he's she, she she's responsible for making sure that Charlie doesn't make too much noise. So she goes out there and does her <laughs> science savant thing, you know, medical savant thing, and, and takes out his eyes and his, you know, disables his vocal cords. But she's sitting there and she's telling him, you're my only friend. Oh. Yeah, she was so lonely. Creepy. So creepy. I mean, I sort of feel like that was the message of the whole movie, was just that loneliness destroys people i guess i that's something i didn't figure out was what was the point of the movie what was the message because i mean it was it was a character study of someone who was broken by loneliness and went of the whole wrong way about making friends and stuff and like just didn't seem to understand much about people right so Which I don't is know why what, I what think you it, get from that. it wasn't her mother's death that spun her out. It was being raised by these two very elderly parents. I yeah, mean, that's true. when she was 10, they were easily in their 60s. Yeah. M- maybe even later. Like, they were much older. Yeah. Especially her dad. So she's being raised by these much older people, way out in the middle of nowhere, isolated all the time. Here's a twist. They were a lot older. Maybe they didn't have any children. Maybe they take children from other people and she learned something that way. There was a moment when, cause, cause, so that first scene where we're seeing the truck find the per- person in the middle of the road. Yeah. I kept trying, like it wasn't at all connected to the yeah. story for a very long time. And I'm like, what was that? And for a while I was like, wait, so did her dad find her mom out mm. there? Like, was that what we saw? Was her mom being caught? And then she's raised, like, so maybe she is their daughter, but she's yeah. the daughter of this creepy kidnapper and his <laughs> kidnapped woman? Too. Like, <clears throat> that, I don't know. That all makes sense. It's the kind of story where whatever you want to think about that stuff is reasonable because it is so messed up. Sure. But then we do find out later that that initial scene yeah. is the same as the end scene. Like, that is Antonio's mom escaping. Oh, it's not the end, but it's toward the end. Yeah. She escapes, and uh, the police finally show up. Like, <laughs> how did they not wonder about... I mean, I assume that the dad at least had to go into town occasionally. Yeah, but I mean, so what? They're out on their farm, nobody... It's a whole Ron Swanson thing where they are on their farm. No one gets in their business. They just oh. live in their rural life. Yeah. The only evidence we even see of the outside world is when she goes to that bar after her dad dies. Yeah. And she's all alone and she's looking for a friend. Yeah. Which, again, ties into that loneliness kills because the friend, Kimiko, Kim- Kimiko shows up she thinks she's like getting picked up for like a one night stand thing right like she's which i have to assume she was doing out of loneliness like she said she never does this thing like 
She clearly was lonely and a little desperate, I have to think, because Franny did not give off, like, sane, stable vibes at any point. Nope. No, she didn't. She's a weirdo. I thought Kimiko was surprisingly freaked out by the joke of I killed my dad, which was not a joke, but just that she immediately was like, I'm in a murderer's house. And she was backing out. She was running for it. She was not willing to let her drive her home. She wasn't willing to wait for a phone call. It was a really extreme reaction. Was I missing it? I wonder if that... I mean, it it almost reads kind of natural to me because she was so... Like, if she was shut down in, like, she was desperate, like, I need companionship, Mm -hmm. enough that she was willing to go home with Franny, and then she suddenly clicked into, oh, every fiber of my body is saying, this is a terrible, terrible decision. Like, I should not be here. Like, she suddenly became aware of what her gut had been probably telling her from the minute she walked in. Like, when she walked in and she's like, your house is so clean. Like... (laughs) Yeah, creepily so. And that refrigerator looks nasty. Like, Yeah, it does. It don't look inside. Uh, well, for sure. But even from the outside, it's like, mm, this whole house is clean and the refrigerator looks like that. Like, that's not a good sign. Yeah, that's weird. So, I don't know. I mean, I, it, didn't, it didn't feel that unnatural to me. But was it a, How did her father die? What do you think? I thought he had a heart attack. I mean, he... That's what I was He assuming. was very old and he had, like pre-heart attack like in the bathtub you know he was going oh i'm not feeling so good and he held his left arm when he was doing that oh see i assumed that was all emotional like that he was crying and over his dead totally wife. could have been but i see what you're saying yeah it seemed that's what it seemed like to me uh-huh. was that he was having early symptoms which was like 10 years early symptoms yeah but you know he kind of moved along and eventually just died And it is interesting, like, she kept his body around for a little while, and then when he... uh, Did she kill Charlie? First she killed Charlie, so then her only friend left was her dead dad. Then she dumped him, because I guess she realized this is not good. And then she was all alone, so she immediately had to go pick someone up. That's right. I thought she had gotten rid of her dad prior to bringing Charlie into the house. Yeah, I don't think so. But I don't think... No, because after... The whole Charlie thing happened. Didn't wasn't she dancing for her dad's yeah. body? Yeah, yeah, that was. And I thought intense. that was going to be a switch. I thought, you know, she kills Charlie and she says, "You're right. This does feel amazing." And I thought she was going to go around and start killing people, but no, she was still pretty happy to lock people up and keep them in the barn. She was really into that. Yeah. I thought she would be all like, I'm going to kill this kid's mom. It's going to be great. But no. So I I am equally confused by her father choosing to keep Charlie. Yeah, I didn't understand why. And her choosing to keep Antonio's mom. Like, I literally don't understand what their thought process could possibly have been. Uh, what benefit did it bring them to have these... It's like having a, you know... A really expensive pet that you doesn't do anything for you. Like, yeah. like I'm not going to go get a cow just so that I have something that I have to clean up afterwards and feed. Yeah. I don't know. Other than the writer saying, this would be creepy. Well, they were correct about that. <laughs> but other than that, and it, maybe it speaks to that backstory idea that maybe she's not their daughter. That this whole kidnapping people thing is a thing. Except that doesn't really explain it. That's the that's the taking children part. That's not the locking people in the barn because she was never locked in the barn. So I don't know why they would do that. They just I, did. I don't it could know be actually that it's more along the lines of, well, I don't want to kill somebody. That's terrible. So let's just keep them in here. And they're making noise, so we got to make sure they're quiet. You yeah. know, it's like yeah, that it was a moralistic kind of thing, like that even morals. they have a line <laughs> that they won't cross. Up to a I point. mean, I'll take your eyes out, but I'm not going to kill you. <laughs> Yikes. I I don't know. I don't understand. And I feel like the person who wrote this movie and the people who made, you know, put the movie together, they knew what they were doing. They knew what they were talking about. Like there was a thing they were trying to say. Yeah. I don't understand what <laughs> that thing was. Well, that leads to my big question for the movie. And this this question, your answer will determine our patented rating system in the end. So (laughs) don't screw this up. (laughs) 
The question is, is this movie a work of art or is it exploitative smut made to look like art? Is it torture porn? That is an excellent question. So here's here's the thing. I don't know. It's either poorly done art <laughs> or exceptionally cleverly done torture porn. Huh. Does that make sense? Like yeah. like if it was truly an artistic film with a with an actual message, they didn't get the message across to me at least. Yeah. And I have to assume from the 56 uh, score from the Rotten Tomatoes audience that there are a lot of other people out there who didn't get it. Yeah. And, and even the critics, if they're giving it a 76, that means that there are a bunch of them who think they should have gotten something That's... and so are scoring it high. Right. But enough of them who are like, yeah, I don't get it either. This, no. Yeah. I mean, there, there's definitely a message. No, I don't know if message is the word. It's definitely about loneliness. Yes. Very much. But... but all the pieces don't fit together. It's like a puzzle. You know, you get like a hundred piece puzzle and you can see like, oh, this puzzle is definitely about butterflies. <laughs> right. But none of the pieces fit together. And this was not about butterflies. <laughs> no, there were no butterflies. But I was thinking how easy it would be to to make this movie to, I mean, not necessarily exactly this movie, but how easy it is to go, I'm going to make it black and white and no one's going to talk very much and we're going to have old italian music playing or probably portuguese and yes it was portuguese so many times when they used and i actually like this part of it so many times when they used extreme distance right for framing their shots yes. like things happened way off in the background of the shot so many times and i actually thought that was very cool and very artistic yeah but again i never quite understood what they were doing like why right there was a there's a scene when she's going to the bar we follow her with a camera in the car yeah. driving for two or three four minutes just driving along and parking at the bar still the camera is in the car she gets out and goes into the bar walks past a guy <laughs> yeah and then i think it doesn't then we see her come back out or it's somebody else comes out i think because it doesn't stay that long well he so she walks past the guy and goes into the bar and then he like puts out his cigarette or whatever and goes in with her yeah and i'm like oh well there's her next victim whatever yeah that's what check off guy smoking a cigarette right right no no nothing to do with it but i mean that's that's a an extremely long boring sequence that has no purpose it's just this is what driving for a long time looks like. And that's art, unless it's not, <laughs> you know? F yeah. Movies from the 50s had that all the time. It was a huge waste of time and super annoying. It's really fun in MST movies while they talk about it. But other than that, it's really boring. I mean, do you think there's anything more to it than we've got this footage and it's, you know, seems artsy and... Our movie's only 76 minutes long. It is really short. <laughs> it felt really long, though. It did. I was really glad. I kept telling myself, don't worry, it's only an hour. Don't worry, it's only an hour. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and partly, not so much because I didn't like watching it. Like, I, I wasn't that unhappy watching it. Just that it was so, there was so much, and it was so pulling so hard on me emotionally. Yeah. That it would have been exhausting to watch more than an hour of it. I was exhausted. It was deeply disturbing all the way through, which maybe that means it's art, but then again, maybe that just means it's torture porn. Because I made a note of at one point when she was working on her second victim, just putting the, the mom in the barn and setting her up and doing the surgery, I'm like, wait, I'm basically watching the human centipede right now, which I vowed I would never do <laughs> because it's nothing i want to see yeah and i mean it was nothing like the human centipede no but, but it's the but same I idea you like mean. you're just watching someone ruin someone else and it's just for just, the sake of ugh. doing it yeah yeah so i i guess in with your question to go back to that i am gonna fall on the side of it was it was really cleverly disguised torture porn that's not a good answer zoli no it really isn't Ooh. and, and i'm sure like, I feel bad. I almost feel bad. Almost feel bad <laughs> saying that because ever since the year that we wrote a review about a movie and the director of that movie or the writer of that movie, like, contacted me and was like, hey, 
yeah, it wasn't exactly what I wanted it to be, but thanks for the review anyway. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, man, those are real people, right? Yep, they're real human real beings. Real people made this movie and, and, and all of the movies that we review. But I, I feel kind of bad condemning this to be called torture porn if that's not what they were going for because, right. I mean, I would feel bad. Well, and to counter that, I, uh, other other notes I made were about how so much of the horrible stuff that happened was not just off screen like hitchcock would kill someone off screen but it you knew it was happening like the knife goes and but the actual stab happens off screen so you're like okay i'm watching a stabbing i know what's happening but i don't have to witness it in this movie you had to infer like she'd take someone out to the barn and then the next shot she's sitting in the kitchen eating rice krispies agatha krispies but (laughs) Speaking of. (laughs) (laughs) But you just inferred what happened. And then, you know, you get more information and you're like, okay, that's definitely what happened. And things like that. like Or like she's chasing Kimiko through the kitchen. And then it like cuts and immediately we see her cleaning the kitchen floor right like, that oh. that was definitely one of them like it wasn't it wasn't that she ran out the door and francisco ran after her and you hear a scream which right. is what hitchcock would do it was they're running along and then she's cleaning up blood so you're like okay we know what happened sure and that um something artistic about that i'm sure i like that i i find that artistic but it also made the whole movie more tense you're always wondering you're not really wondering what's happened but you know there's lots of big gaps so lots of things could have happened that you're not sure about until later and you find Mm -hmm. out you don't see bad stuff happen for the most part you just see her walking around doing her thing but that whole time it's filled with the tension of what has happened off screen yeah that's interesting i agree and i i do feel like this was one of the more horrific movies we've seen oh yeah and not just because of the like the human centipede aspect of it in terms of you know hurting people and then healing them so that you have them around to continue hurting them. I think that's the part that, yeah. that doesn't sit well. That wasn't the horrific part. There are lots of movies that are horrific in that way. I think, especially as a little girl, her her complete and utter lack of emotion I made notes was of that. so terrifying to me. And her dad was the same way. And then she was so desperately reaching out for connection with him. And she's like, I love you, daddy. Yeah, and he and just he was... has zero, like, no affect, continues staring at the TV, doesn't even acknowledge her existence. Or his wife's death, for the most part. Right. It was all. It was very emotionless all over. When she was meeting with Kimiko in her house, there was this part where she kind of walks around and she cocks her head and she has like her arms out like a ballerina she looked like a doll it like franny you mean yeah franny like Mm -hmm. look she's like an alien she's kind of just right looking at things studying this human yeah oh is that how humans do things yeah because she didn't know i truly think she didn't know me neither weird so along with that it's interesting to note that the the most connected she ever was with her parents yeah. was after they were dead yeah her dad she has there's this like very uncomfortable scene where she's got his body propped up on the sofa the way he always sat but she gets to snuggle with him now because he is dead and can't stop her yeah and that's then, great yeah oh, it was super uncomfortable and then Later, like she actually has this very heartfelt conversation with her mother's skull that she's gone out into the forest to dig up. Yeah, I think she says, like, alas, whole... poor Yorick. No, <laughs> no, she didn't say that. But yeah, like those, this is what she's learning is that if I love people who are alive, they die and leave me, or I they try to leave me and I have to kill them. And if I wait until after they're dead, then I can get whatever I need from them. Of course. It's very strange. That doesn't explain why she locks him up in the barn. They'd be so much more useful dead. I don't know. There's not a lot of emotional consistency, I don't think. Ratings! I believe that you get to start ratings this time. (sighs) Okay, just keep in mind that you did this with your answer to my question. Oh, I suddenly feel like we're going to have very different scores. Oh, I think we are, if that's what you think. Okay, go. This movie was very upsetting. 
which I guess is the point of horror to a degree. But I like to have fun with horror. That's <laughs> why I'm watching it, is for fun. And it reminds me of Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which is a vastly different movie, Ooh. but which also is just an engine to assault the viewer. It's incredibly unpleasant, annoying. This movie isn't. Texas Chainsaw is. Uh, grating. It just yeah. tears into you and attacks your senses. This movie doesn't do that but it's disturbing you. It's working so hard to make you feel uncomfortable and unhappy and just miserable. And if that was in the service of art, that's better. But I was told earlier today (laughs) that it was not, and it was just torture porn, and I I don't approve. I feel like your rating should be based on what you think it was doing. That's. I had such a question on that. I really couldn't tell. And... You know what? They were probably going for something a little artsy. I mean, sure, they figured, hey, let's, we've got this script. Let's make it artistic to the extent that we have the ability to do. And they tried. And like you said, it was kind of poorly done art in a way, but it was also, it was very artistic. It had a lot of really cool shots in it. Anyway, all told, I can't recommend other people watch this movie. Really? It has been recommended to me, and now I've seen it, and I can't unsee it. (laughs) Well, (laughs) what if we take your eyes out? (laughs) That does not... That just means that's all I'll see forever is this movie inside my head. Okay. Let's not see it again. And I'm going to rate it 2.5 cow eyes out of 5. Which I feel bad rating that low because it seemed artistic and good, but it was not good. It was bad. It you was did not torture. enjoy this movie for, I, and on, on any level. I really. was interested in it throughout, and yet I wanted it to end very shortly after <laughs> it started. I was done. And that hour and 16 minutes felt like three hours. So I was unhappy during this movie. And if that's what you're looking for in horror, which is understandable, that's horrific for sure, then go watch this movie and have a party because I'm not coming to your party. How do you feel, Sully? Wow. Um, I I feel like this is one of the more strong, like really intense reactions you've had to a movie in all the years we've been doing this together. I'm coming at it from a different direction in that I truly feel that this movie was horrific. It was. I feel like it, slasher's not right, but like for the violent aspect of it, it actually did bring in quite a few artistic things i thought the soundtrack and the mm-hmm. the the actual camera work and the acting like all of the 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 elements that went into making this movie were exceptionally strong yeah i feel like the script is where it got lost like that it was trying be. to say something yeah. and it didn't quite manage to do it and maybe that has to do with the directing then the you know the how all of that fancy all those fancy shots were used but it missed the mark somehow but even if we consider it just horror for the sake of horror Uh that's made to look fancy i was actually impressed by that because (laughs) i don't like watching horror for the sake of gory violent horror you know sewing with people while they're still alive (laughs) or you know still awake and stuff like that and I can't say that I enjoyed watching this movie. I still feel like it. I'm glad we watched it. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Even that doesn't sound right. I'm not super glad that I watched it, but I feel like it was it was interesting in the sense that like Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I'm glad we watched it because it was groundbreaking out yeah. from its time, right? Like yeah, it was I'm good all with new stuff. This isn't necessarily all new stuff, but I feel like it was definitely going outside the box and doing something unique. Yeah. And I like that. I appreciate that. Even if it didn't quite hit whatever, a a mark that makes sense to me, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So so I'm going to give it 3.5 cow eyes. Okay. Leaning heavily toward four, but I don't feel like I can quite give it a four. Okay. And you know, if it hadn't missed that mark on art, if it had been exactly what we watched in terms of torture and torturing me personally, Uh but... I had felt at the end like, oh yeah, that's a that's a real message. That's I I learned something or whatever. I would have gone four point five something like that for sure. It would have been great. 
I think if it had hit the mark, it this might have been my first five for the month. Yeah, I could see that, totally. Because if it had the actual, like, if it had a really powerful script and all the other stuff was in place, it's a really good movie. Yeah. But the it, the message just isn't there. Yep. It just, and it, it probably is, and I'm just dumb, but that's the rating I get. It's with the brain that I've got. Right? Oh, it's either rate this movie lower or rate my brain lower for not being smart enough to get it yeah well the good news is tomorrow we're gonna have some fun i'm sure there's no way we're doing this again (laughs) you don't want me to go find another like bleak black and white (laughs) film well that might be fun actually something from a film festival (laughs) sure (laughs) as long as it's fun as long as it's fun all right well Catch you on the flippity floppy. That sounds horrible after all the eye removal.